Hello, my name is uh, Peter Waters from Waters and Stanton and uh, another video for you. Today I want to talk about end-fed antennas. It's a subject which uh, I've been looking at recently and um, there's some very distinct advantages. But let me go back a bit. I was first licensed in 1960 and end-fed antennas were very popular because it was a very convenient way of putting up an aerial for HF operation. A length of wire, a random length down the garden and into the uh, transmitter. It was a lot easier in those days because we had Pi networks and we could often make the Pi network feed directly into an in-fed antenna. But sometimes we needed uh, an antenna tuner. But it was all very much uh, seat of the pants stuff. Uh, we didn't have SWR meters, anything like that. Uh, we used to rely on um, uh, RF current meters or even uh, neon screwdrivers and uh, neon tubes. And the in-fed antenna, although it was very convenient, um, had a lot of uh, problems, uh, particularly because it, was, it would work on one band and not another. And there wasn't much thought about uh, length. The rule of the thumb in those days was the longer the wire, the better. Well, now fast forward into 2019. And the end-fed antenna has had a bit of resurgence. There are two reasons for that. The first is convenience. Um, an end-fed antenna is very convenient because you can hang it out the window, run it down the garden into a tree. You haven't got to worry about coax feeder. Um, by definition, it becomes a lightweight antenna because all you're dealing with is a length of wire. You can change the configuration you can make it into an inverted L or an inverted V but the fact is that the advantage um, in terms of putting it up is very easy because it's very cheap uh, but there is another advantage and that is that if we choose a resonant length um, it immediately becomes effectively a multiband antenna now let me explain this Let's take 7 megahertz as a starting point. 7 megahertz is around about 60, uh, sorry, about, um, yes, about 66 feet uh, long. Sorry I'm working in feet, but uh, I've been around for a long time and I still think in terms of feet in, in, in relation to antennas. So 66 foot long is a half wave on 40 meters. And that presents a high impedance. Now, if we go up uh, one harmonic to 14 megahertz, 20 meters, that 66 foot becomes two half waves or a full wave, but it still presents a high impedance. So immediately we've got an antenna which is capable of covering, covering two bands but has the same impedance at the feed point. Now, if you look at a dipole, a 40 meter dipole uh, in the center has got a 50 ohm feed, but it's got a very high impedance if you try and operate it on 20 meters. So with an in-fed wire, we're dealing with an antenna which has a constant impedance provided we make it a length that multiplies up to the other bands. So. In terms of 7 megahertz or 40 meters, uh, the 40 meter antenna, 66 foot long, is a half wave. On 20 meters, it becomes a full wave. On 21 megahertz, 15 meters, it becomes one and a half waves, but still high impedance. And on 10 meters, it becomes two wavelengths, but again high impedance. So you see, we've got an antenna which can cover 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters, but present that important constant high impedance. So 66 foot wire can be made to multiband without any traps. So we use the whole length of the antenna. Now, 
One of the problems with feeding uh, high impedance has always been that the antenna, particularly on modern transceivers, is uh, the antenna output on the transceiver is designed to be 50 ohms. Well, 50 ohms is a million miles away from the high impedance of an infrared antenna. We, if we talk about impedances, we're talking about two and a half to three thousand ohms, give or take. It varies depending on the installation, but it's a high impedance. In recent times, it's been possible to manufacture a transformer, not an antenna tuner, but a transformer that covers a wide band of frequencies and will transform one impedance to another at RF. So if we can make a transformer that transforms 50 ohms to say two and a half or 3000 ohms, we can then directly feed that infrared wire. And that really is what has been achieved in recent times. You can have um, a transformer, RF transformer, that will transform your 50 ohms into two and a half to 3000 ohms, and that will then directly feed the antenna, and that antenna has the same impedance on multiples of the root or base band. So again, go back to seven megahertz, seven megahertz high impedance, two and a half, 3000 ohms, 40 megahertz, same impedance, 21 megahertz, same impedance, 28 megahertz, same impedance. So we've got a multi-band antenna, very simply by a length of, of wire. Now, um, I'm not going to go any further at the moment in that because the next stage would be how do we actually um, match it and so forth. But if we're talking commercially, you can buy um, a transformer now um, that will do that job. And in fact, you can actually buy the whole, the whole kit. Um, my antennas produce uh, an antenna system which covers 40 through to 10 meters. And for that, you get the transformer um, ready-made, um, pre-adjusted, uh, pre the SO239, um, the, the right length of wire and so forth. One other thing that I should say, which I'm beginning to appreciate now, is that the bandwidth of an infrared antenna tends to be better than a 50 ohm feed. Now I haven't gone too closely into it at the moment, but when I look at the, the bar graphs I'm getting, from my system that I'm uh, testing and uh, playing around with at the moment is that the bandwidth is far better than you'd get on a 50 ohm system. So that is another plus. For the moment, if you want to try an infrared antenna, then do make sure you buy a proper system. Um, we're not talking about nine to one balance or anything like that. Buy a proper transformer system. Um, my antennas, which we stock, the, the Duant antenna, which goes from 40 through to uh, 10 meters, uh, another one that goes from 80 through to 10 meters. Uh, the 80 meter one is around about 128 foot long, and the 40 meter one is around about 62 or 63. The, the actual half wavelength tends to be slightly shorter uh, than theory su suggests. So. If you're thinking about uh, operating on the HF bands, you've got a smallish garden, have a look at an infrared antenna that covers 40 through to 10 meters, 66 foot long. You can, invert, you can erect it as an inverted L, which, which makes it even shorter, go up about 20, 25 feet, and then the, the rest horizontal. Inverted V, which shortens the antenna. Um, and uh, you'll be very impressed, I'm sure. I'll come back uh, later on in another video and talk a bit more about this. But uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching.